Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, of course, the Skyrunner. And also, before going into this battle, I want to thank Lorenzo so much for recording this. Like I said, the big games are going to be recorded in this kind of quality. So I'm going to leave Lorenzo's channel down below. It's an excellent pocket super, really. And um, also, like I said, we're going up against Bluesy or John, a very, very good friend of mine and follower. And he is a generally dangerous player, and he's just turned off on his own actually with a Pokemon channel, so I was gonna link that down below. And before going into this game, I did predict a bit right, but I also didn't predict Reggie Eyes, which was really, really intimidating, to be honest. Uh, I did see Lupine, Umbreon, uh, Sylveon being a part of this. Bronzo was kinda given because his walls stopped limp. Uh, but Flygon. I did see Flygon as a fast alternative, and uh, Red Eyes, like I said, did, didn't predict that whatsoever. And uh, yeah, Red Eyes is actually a big threat. It has access to the you know the best of moves, really, and in contrast with that, actually have uh, well not the best typing, but the special defense you know it's up there. Uh, you can't kill it with special defense alone, and that's something that I need to work around with. So I think that's the biggest main idea, like I couldn't really prepare for it, so um, yeah, I'm gonna just do whatever I can to avoid that at all. And I myself did a switch in before going into this battle, I actually decided to dump Scolipede and bring, um, actually I think I believe my Siglyph instead. Siglyph hits a lot of things super effectively, uh, like really really good, I had Ice Boom Siglyph basically to, if it brought flying on that, you know, I could probably want to kill it. Um, failing to recognize, of course, that Flygon is naturally faster, and uh, yeah, that's that's worth keeping in mind. But other than that, I have Keldeo, Magnuson, Stuffle, Nipowdown, and Chansey. Um, Magnuson is only here for Bronze Song, only here to lock in Bronze Song to get that out of the way so Stuffle can sweep freely. I also have Protect on uh, Magnuson, Stuffle, and Chansey. Uh, basically, to uh, deal with the Lupin here, because I can't rely on, um, I can't rely being faster and the Lupin. Lupin out speed of my whole team, really. And my Kelly is scarf to deal with Lupin, and he probably has Rocky Helmet to be able to deal with Lupin because he can't uh, two hit KO. It's at best three hit KO, and I can just slack off that off, really. <laughs> that rhyme. Uh, but yeah, that was my main idea. Like, Lupin was very, very threatening, so. I only really designed myself to that, and the rest of it was really just trying to survive the onslaught. Now that Umbreon is a complete stop for my team, and also know that Sylveon can sweep my team, so I need to keep my Chansey really, really healthy, and my Magnuson can probably deal with Sylveon if it comes to that position. But other than that, like I said, Red Eyes is a big threat if I can't hit it hard enough, and I definitely need my rocks up. So yeah, a little bit of a longer preview intro here, but uh, yeah, with all this in mind guys, let's actually go. So from the start here, I did predict actually my opponent gonna start with Flygon. So I'm just gonna start with my Scarf Kaleo because I basically wanted to have big damage on it. Uh, he's gonna bring the Red Eyes. Now, even with Sacred Sword, I can't uh, defeat the Red Eyes. And Thunder is something I really don't want to take because it has a 30% chance of um, paralyzing. Or, you know, we could have Thunderbolt, but Thunder was, I seemed likely for him to have that. And it's not gonna do a whole lot to the blob that is my Chansey. I really need to have, give a real nickname to that. But anyway, at the same time here, obviously me being paralyzed, not the best thing really. And now the Cowbell is gonna come, and I'm fully paralyzed. Not good, not good. But at the same time, I was thinking, right, he's gonna get up his rocks. There is no way he's gonna play this thing differently. He's just gonna bring Manus Zone and lock this thing down. So, early on here, things are working out, and uh, I'm just gonna go for the Magnet Rise, because I was predicting that he could have seen this one coming and go for uh, Earthquake, so I have some spin investment, and uh, basically, gonna make sure that if it's max speed, he <laughs> can't outspeed me. Uh, but no, the biggest hit here is the Psychic, uh, that's good, that's really good to be honest, and um, basically, we're just gonna go for Thunderbolt, see how much damage it does. It's not a 2 hit kill. Uh, which is bad, um, that probably showcases also that I'm not fully specially invested, uh, but also Bronzong is naturally bulky. And at this point, I was basically just, yeah, we're gonna hand, we're gonna take him out of the way, I don't really need to worry too much about him. Uh, but we're gonna showcase the Reflect, 
And I should have responded properly to this. Um, I decided to actually kill off the Bronze Song. And like I said, I had Protect on my Magnus Song. And I should have definitely took it, taken the chance to wear off some turns here. Because Reflect makes things difficult. It makes Stoutland not be able to sweep his team. It has and if Stoutland can't sweep, then obviously we are in trouble. Because then that means that every Pokemon that he has let, uh, left is still able to take on the pressure. So the pretty guy is going to come in here and... I did probably not to do the right response here. I was feeling that I could probably take a Focus Blast if he landed it. Um, I cannot. I cannot. Magnuson is just gonna... <laughs> just explode. And uh, yeah, that's how I lose him. So then we're gonna go to Stoutland. And uh, as of right now, I have kind of forgotten about the Reflect. So I'm gonna go for a turn. He's actually feeling pressured out. Uh, I think he could have taken a superpower to be honest. And I decided to go for a return instead, thinking that Sylvan is going to come in. And that return did nothing. And I was thinking, how uh, how did it do so little? Uh, and then it alright, oh, right, reflect. Fuck it, damn it, why why did I do that? Why didn't I switch into my. <laughs> why didn't I switch to uh, my Siglyph? But in a way, I'm just going to go for Chance yes, this time, and he's going to showcase a wish. So this is going to be a very, very slow ride. Um, I actually was writing up the attacks he was using, basically to narrow down what kind of Umbreon this was. So T-Wave was important, I was feeling that even with synchronization, that having the Umbreon locked down is, uh, is my next best thing. But he's gonna show me the Heal Bell! I was like, dude, really? You have Heal Bell? That's awesome, that's a great response. Probably not for me, but you know, in contrast to what's happened here, um, can't deny that fact. I did go for another fun way basically to hope for him to switch out. But that did not come into fruition now, did it? But anyway, um, now he, he's gonna bring the Bugsy, which is the Flygon. And um, I decided here actually to go to my Powdown, because I know I can take Foul Plays like all day, and I have access to Rocky Elements, so it's not gonna do a whole lot to me. So I'm gonna set up the sand. And this position was actually really, really nice, and uh, the Reflect finally wears off. Uh, he's gonna go for U-turn, basically seeing that he can't really do anything, you know, that's fine. And the Rock Helmet does the same amount of damage, and he has a Life Orb, so that's quite a contrast, to be honest. I decided to go for Rocks because I really need my Rocks up. Uh, he's gonna go to Eric, which of course is the uh, Umbreon. And I was feeling that he might go for... Um, Toxic here, that that was his best response, but he's actually going for another heal bell, uh, which I found was a bit strange. Then again, I guess he don't want that Umbreon to be in a bad position. So I went for Roar, pretty much banking on not Red Eyes coming in, and look at this, he powed on. I think this is your seventh Roar, and this is the first time you get a better position from that. That's awesome. So anyway, I'm just gonna go for uh, you know, this is really mean to be honest. But since he showcased Life Orb, I knew I could stall this out. Uh, I actually only have Earthquake as an attack move, so I knew that you know this is probably not gonna work. And I decided here to switch out Pokemon and go for another Earthquake because if you go for an Outrage, then he's gonna hit the Rocky Element, and just gonna go to Mephos, and he goes for Outrage. Yeah, I was so shocked by this. Like the sheer amount of the power hidden the Sigilyph was just. It was just undeniable how well that damage, it almost kills me actually, and that was, like I said, I was predicting Earthquake, I was thinking, you know, he wouldn't risk the Rocky Helmet damage, he wouldn't risk that, and he did, and it actually paid off, so I'm forced to go back into a power down, which can take, of course, this onslaught, it really can, and um, I'm just gonna slack it off, basically. And the next onslaught of Outrage Rocky Helmet damage is gonna kill the Flygon with the Life for Rebound. So yeah, that, that's how you do it. That's really how you do it. Like I said, I did not see my opponent um, bringing that pressure up there. And it definitely, definitely wounded me really badly. And Siglyph, which was a good response to a lot of his Pokemon, is now kinda done for. Can't really do a whole lot. So Frito, the Really, really nasty Sylveon, to be honest, is gonna come in. And I was really predictable here, and I said that in my preview uh, preview video, really, that I knew that Chance is my only switch in, and if he predicts that, then, you know, I'm in trouble. 
Uh, and the side shock is definitely trouble worthy because it hits me for a bit too much. Like that's an easy a two hit kill from the range of HP I was in. Um, with of course sand really not helping. <laughs> and I decided, okay, I can still recover from that. So we're gonna sack Mythos. Uh, that's the only play I have left. And um, then basically going into my uh, Hippowdon. And um, yeah, I was debating whether or not he would sack his, uh, his Sylveon here. Because I have superpower, like I said, and it hits super effectively on his team besides the Sylveon. So I was really fearing that he could switch that out, but he doesn't do it. And Stoutland isn't having any of that, and Sylveon is gonna fall. <laughs> Pretty much bop it. Uh, he can't take that kind of damage, he just he can't. And of course, the Sandstorm subside. And the now opponent thing is a great opportunity to bring the Mega Loop on and go for the high jump kick. And like I said previously here, I do pack to protect. Now I'm thinking that he would probably feel pressure enough not to go for fake out. He really needs to get the damage out there. So I was really fearing that he could have brain punch instead of high jump kick. Uh, since I have a chance here after all. So just go for protect. And what do you know? There's high jump kick. So that's easy 50% 50, 50 there. And uh, I wouldn't want to risk the second protect. So I decided to just sack off my Chansey. Or the blob. And um, yeah, Chansey got them really, really nifty and gonna avoid the high jump kick. Damn nifty moves! And uh, Lupin is gone. That was very, very anticlimactic, wasn't it? Wasn't it? So anyway, he hasn't too many Pokemon left now. I am obviously in the position I needed to be all this time. And I'm gonna go for Soft Boil, and, um, which obviously tells me that I'm, I'm faster. Uh, I did. I think I have four speed or EVs in um, speed, and I think that's kind of a decisive point here. Uh, the Focus Blast does not do a whole lot of damage, but I do drop, of course, the um, ooh, what do you call it? The special defense, some force attack now, and probably not try to stall this off. So his last Pokemon is the Umbreon, and wouldn't you know, the most wallet Pokemon that I know about is the thing that's gonna give me a hard time. Uh, he's gonna foul play. Obviously it's not gonna do a whole lot, and I just decided to go for a Seismic Toss, trying to get some damage on here. Uh, totally forgetting about Rocky Helmet, and the Rocky Helmet alone will kill me. <laughs> uh, he's gonna go for Wish here, that's fine. I decided to go for a Soft Boiled, and uh, no, I went for T-Wave, right. And uh, basically try to shut him down. Uh, he, of course he can go just go for Hebel and back on track, but really now, um, that's... That's really not that worrisome because, like I said, uh, Shansi can stall him out. He's he's not winning against Shansi. Uh, so I'm just gonna go for Keldeo, just trying to finish off this game. Really, Keldeo, who was a backup plan whole the whole game, really didn't need a whole lot of uh, planning really because he just comes in and finishes it off. Uh, now, to be fair here, um, foul play is actually really really mean. Con consider that it actually boosts the justified, and the foul play does more damage for every turn. But that's the position we're in, there was no way that he was gonna take a two hits of these. And I think my opponent saw that and just, yeah, okay, GG, it's over, I get it. And that was a very, very, very intimidating game, to be honest. Because while I had, you know, a, a really here, a lot of momentum naturally built from myself, um, it still was one of those things where I know that Lucy made some good calls with the flying on, and. Um, his Mega Loop Bunny just was unlucky, really. The Mega Loop Bunny could still be very successful against me, and I knew that um, things were not gonna go in my favor. And I probably shouldn't win a 4 0. I think it was closer to a, maybe 2 0 at best, uh, considering the way I played. So uh, the 4 0 seems really mean. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy this game. And uh, yeah, the reason Flying on is here is because he was a game changer at the mid game. Uh, he really took back the momentum that was really necessary for uh, Blue Sea to kind of come back. Um, luckily for me, I guess I kind of pulled through anyway. But um, it should have been closer than a than a four zero. I will probably be more like a two zero match. Really, the high jump kick, like like I said, definitely the misses do does matter because I still believe that his mock I could do a lot of damage to my team. And uh, it, it really sucks, to be honest. Blues is one of those really, really good players, and I recognized that going in. And um, I basically had to plan it with Manning Stone, and that was all I really had. Or rather, that was 
all I needed to kind of work properly and uh, he didn't see that one coming and uh, that definitely hurt his team structure a lot very early on but besides that I think it was generally a good game and um, yeah with that win we're actually 5 for 4 now I uh, should also say that uh, Edinburgh Knights had a 4-4 record going into this too and Mr. Merker lost his battle so he's actually 4 for 5 too so we're actually past both of them because of that and uh, yeah we're actually in a playoff position as of right now uh, obviously I still need to keep winning and my last three opponents are tough players so we'll see what we do with that but yeah I really hope I don't get to meet Blues again at least not in this format because now he knows what I'm all about and uh, he can punish me he has the necessary tools to punish me so don't bring lantern man don't bring lantern that's all I can say uh, but anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching, and make sure to leave a like, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, sky's the limit. I'll see, yeah, you know, bye and all. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye.